All right, welcome to this edition of Cyber Chat. I'm your host today, Dave. Dave, the guy always asking stupid questions to keep you proceeding by inquiry. It's August, uh, excuse me, September 16th, 2020, hard to believe. And today I'm gonna give a quick update on the Theta Network developments, as well as the Zetidic News Network. Okay, this Thursday, first of all, at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, tune in to our YouTube channel. We're going to try our hand at live streaming again. We're going to be uh, producing the 13th episode of the Zetidic Newscast. And we're also going to be joined by special guest John the Morgyle. Now, we've talked to John a couple times before, at least attempted to. Uh, had some great discussions, but all of our productions have been plagued by um, audio issues that uh, were, were of course my fault for being the engineer uh, behind the scenes and uh, we'd like to just catch up with him and see if we can get some quality uh, content out there uh, without you know echoes and that sort of thing so once again um, that's this Thursday September 17th 2020 at 9 30 p.m. Eastern uh, or thereabouts tune in and we're going to try again at live streaming so look out for episode 13 uh, coming out um, in the next week or so. And, uh, and yeah, we look forward to that. Okay, moving on to the Theta Network and its developments. Uh, you might think all my cyber chats are relative to Theta Network right now, and that, that's true. Um, it's pretty important because we are in our development phase, our building phase, our foundation phase, as a network, uh, not just content, um, but uh, infrastructure. And we, uh, the more time goes by, the more we feel that the Theta Network is really heading in a positive direction that's gonna uh, lead us to, you know, really have um, a place where we can uh, produce our content, our original content and curate other types of content that need to get out there in this age of censorship. So all of the developments with Theta Network are really uh, critical to our development and worth noting. Uh, also, the community is um, you know, very robust and freedom oriented. Uh, they are also cryptocurrency people by, by inherently. So, so they're all about you know, um, giving that financial um, power, that authority to um, exchange value back to the people. So. Um, really interesting developments. A uh, couple things to note here. Number one, if you go to guardianmonitor.io, you can see that we haven't moved up in the rankings here, but we do have our, our little tag there to show you how our, our, our budding news station is doing, but we've also attained elite status, which means we have been participating in blockchain validation 100% of the time for the last month, 30 days. And so we have attained elite status as a, as a guardian node, and we are earning uh, roughly 10,000 T fuel every month, which we are stashing away so that we can pay future guests and contributors uh, their fair share uh, for adding value to our network. Uh, we've already paid out several thousand T fuel to our special guests. We're going to pay out a couple more thousand this Thursday when we have John the Morgyle on our show. Uh, and of course, I always pay our, our host, um, Xavier Diamant, uh, co host um, of the show as well. So we'll, we'll continue to do that and look at ways for us to leverage the Theta Network um, to our own advantage. Um, the other reason I wanted to bring that up is. Uh, and I brought this up in the last cyber chat, but um, earlier in September, Theta um, talked about the benefits of decentralized finance to emerging content creators on Theta blockchain. And this is really interesting because um, we're going to have a whole wealth of tools um, shortly here at our disposal to uh, enable you know supporters of free speech outlets like ZNN to uh, to actually earn uh, and grow with us. Okay, so um, they talk about some ideas here, um, how this would benefit content creators. I have my own ideas. You know, we've we've modeled our, we're trying to model our guardian node operation uh, after this this incentivized idea. But 
one idea I had is for ZNN to have its own essentially uh, staking pool with Theta. So, okay, so we're a network. We provide original content. We curate original content from other creators like Eric Dubé, for example. Um, it could be in the future, um, you know, these are Theta owners themselves or they just support ZNN and uh, they want to participate and grow with us. Um, they could actually stake their tokens on our Guardian node and uh, there could be a smart contract um, associated with that that will, um, you know, basically give us a small donation of their own T fuel earnings uh, by staking their their tokens with our node and the rest go directly to their wallet or um, you know smart contracts can be written such that you know they are able to um, earn a portion of T fuel that's generated on the ZNN website um, whenever it's engaged with and the other portion goes to ZNN for providing that platform so I, I really see this, um, the flexibility here expanding as time goes on, as smart contracts come online. And this will, yeah, it will empower content creators and enable that democratization of not only the means of distribution, but also the means of finance for, um, for content creators. Um, but in addition to, you know, streaming content, I understand Theta is uh, working diligently on video on demand. and Based on an interview that I recently listened to uh, with Wes Levitt, the head of strategy for Theta on the Crypto Crow channel, Jason Appleton, he interviewed him. We tried to restream this, um, but there were some, some issues that led to uh, some uh, buffering issues, ironically, on YouTube. And, um, and I think it was crypto crow's fault he streamed in too many places or something uh so our 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 recording of it is not of good quality but if you go over to his youtube and check it out there's some interesting insights in here it sounds like they're going to release video on demand for theta.tv first uh like i've talked about in the past theta.tv is a sort of pro proof of concept uh of course it it's their own business you know sliver.tv was its own business regardless of theta but now now it's a business plus a sort of um, testing environment for the Theta um, the Theta project. And video on demand is going to come to Theta.tv. So it won't just be pure streaming like Twitch anymore. It will be, you know, video that gets um, stored and can be replayed at any time. And I also thought I heard Wes talk about um, giving a developing some sort of import option where you could mirror or copy uh, your YouTube content onto Theta.tv. But of course the advantage on Theta.tv is, you know, you can receive T Fuel donations, you can receive T Fuel earnings by watching content on Theta.tv as not, not only for real, you for real earn that money, so call it, but um, it's also uh, something that could be emulated on, on any other platform. Um, and it, it, it's, you know, working out the kinks, I see it before they have explosive mass adoption. So check out this interview with Crypto Crow and Wes Levitt. Interesting insights there. Look forward to the next discussion. Um, and I'm really excited for video on demand to come, not just out um, for Theta.tv, but out in general, because that is essentially no different from static data regardless of, of type. So they're gonna first apply it to video uh, st static data, um, which is gonna be very valuable for other platforms like YouTube, Netflix, et cetera, where um, you know, if there are no concurrent users, you, you, know, you still have users wanting to watch certain pieces of information, but also that should easily translate to any kind of static data, even if it's not a video sitting on a platform somewhere. So. The demand uh, for this uh, decentralized um, content delivery network should increase with that new capability, and it'll be interesting to see what that does to the um, you know the price of T fuel, especially, but also of course Theta tokens as well. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was speaking of 
adoption and attention and PR, um, Binance premieres the Battle of Asia esports tourney exclusively powered by Theta Network. And Binance, for those of you who aren't aware, is a um, is a cryptocurrency exchange. It's one of the few places that you can buy Theta. Binance also runs a validator node, so they're a strategic partner with Theta Network, and they have a, a large quantity of T fuel um, as well. Um, and they also have a staking program. So if you have Theta tokens on Binance, you can stake them with Binance and uh, my understanding is that you can earn T fuel just like you would if you were running your own guardian node, but um, you don't actually have to run the node. You just have your Theta tokens in the Binance wallet. I personally wouldn't trust that. I don't keep my Theta tokens in the exchange any longer than I have to. And I do run my own guardian node, but might be a good option if, if you're, you know, not wanting to do that or are, you know, keeping your funds more transiently. But uh, moving back to this Battle of Asia uh, announcement, um, it's going to start September 22nd. But more importantly, Binance will be utilizing Theta blockchain to stream all matches worldwide on Binance.com and Theta.tv, inviting everyone to share their bandwidth and earn T-Fuel. As part of this initiative, Binance is integrating T-Fuel earnings, a custom Theta video player, and interactive chat. Um, with a, a, an exclusive page on the Binance.com global website. So I know in some of my past cyber chats, I was um, hoping for, wishing for out of the hackathon to come some sort of embed product that would allow uh, you know website owners to easily embed a Theta stream on their website, um, not confined to the Theta.tv platform, but could embed say a decentralized any cast stream right now you have to d use the edge node player which i've detailed before as well but it would be much better if you could just play it like in window just like you would any other piece of video content and i think with video on demand that's going to be um probably something either they release or uh, maybe the community releases what's really interesting about this announcement as well is the the actual exposure that this brings to the Theta network. Um, the um, esports teams from Korea, Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, and the Philippines will be competing in PUBG Mobile. I'm not familiar with it, but one of the most popular mobile games to date with over 50 million daily active users. The majority of them are coming from Asia. Uh, this will be held across the APAC region and um, they provide a map here with the um you know the gaming populations uh who are really going to be most participatory here so um it'll be interesting to see uh when this kicks off what that means for t fuel again t fuel circulation supply and demand and and of course the dollar price so keep an eye on that once that kicks off on this on september 22nd and then the last thing I'll talk about is, oh, did I lose my link? Let me just type it in here. So Theta Labs was granted a US patent for methods and systems for a decentralized data streaming and delivery network. So I don't purport to fully understand the true technical innovation or how it differs uh, from you know other peer-to-peer technologies, except that this is somewhat of a hybrid model, meaning they layer over the centralized content delivery networks. So um, what's really smart about it is, you know, if you're a platform owner, you don't have to switch from centralized content delivery to decentralized content delivery and like one or the other. Theta is actually hybrid, meaning both. And there's some sort of algorithmic intelligence behind which one is used at any given time. And there's also this intelligence around uh, measuring available resources and efficiently using them. And then of course, um, paying appropriately for the resources that have been dedicated. So that's a pretty fascinating subject, rather academic. It's above my um, 
my technical capabilities, but um, it was proprietary enough for the U.S. Patent Office to grant this patent. And if you go back to this interview I mentioned before with Crypto Crow, this was one of the things that they talked about is, okay, a patent is only as good as your ability to defend it or use it. There are these patent, um, I forget what you call them, but you know, companies that develop a patent and then all their business model is basically suing other businesses who've infringed on something that they've uh, patented. Uh, not the intention here. Uh, it sounds like according to Wes, this is a, a way for um, Theta Labs to provide confidence in probably in, in institutional settings more than anything. Uh, we, we know the crypto crowd is uh, sometimes less than discerning <laughs> about the project's fundamentals, but it looks like they're trying to bolster the fundamentals of their project by insulating um, Theta token holders from risk of somebody just forking Theta and rebranding it, remarketing it, and monetizing it themselves, which which would really extract value from from the original investors in the Theta token. So um, it's not a guarantee that uh, anybody doesn't you know produce a better concept um, that's also similar. But it does give some um, some roadblocks, let's call it, from you know a YouTube or slash Google, you know, from looking at the code which is open source and directly copying it um, and introducing their own uh, their own solution that that essentially does the same thing but wasn't there. So um, it, I'm not sure if it will mean that you know Google has to go through Theta. Um, if they want to offer a system such as what Theta offers, um, it, you know, it's certainly imaginable to me that a big nefarious company like like Google or Microsoft would 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 um, yeah, imitation is uh, <laughs> the sincerest form of flattery. Like we see this a lot in tech, you know, brain raping and um, yeah, a copying uh, of of intellectual property uh, that goes unaccounted for, or unpunished. Not hard to imagine, but uh, it is interesting to note that Google decided to partner with Theta and runs a validator node instead of copying it. So kind of lends some credibility to this strategy that, you know, having this patent is um, at least some form of protection and insurance over the ideas being scalped. So uh, very interesting developments. Uh, we are still waiting for this mystery validator node to be announced. Um, where is it? On Guardian Monitor, you can see the Guardian nodes and the validator nodes right here. So there's 6.6 .6 million Theta staked in a validator node, um, but we still don't know who that is. Could be Sony, could be Coinbase, could be Apple, we don't know. Um, but it's interesting to note, it's been here blank for, I don't know, maybe more than a month now. Um, and, uh, we'll be interested to see what happens to the dollar price, uh, once that is announced. I'm thinking it's Coinbase. That's what I'm hoping for anyways, and sort of what I'm predicting, but I don't have any inside knowledge and this is not financial advice and you should take your own risks and, um, assessments of your financial condition before making any purchase decisions. Um, that's it for the Theta update. Uh, we're sitting at 52 cents right now, dollar price. Um, you know, it's been trading in a range um, above, you know, 42, 43 cents, you know, for, for a couple of weeks now. Seems like the new normal for Theta. Um, and many are speculating that, you know, the days of um, sub 30 cent or even some are saying sub 40 cents per Theta token are over. Another interesting point, just I'll end on this, uh, that was brought up here is the average hold time for a Theta token owner is more than a year. And I think, um, you know, that's obviously less than a 10 year treasury bond, but uh, it's probably a lot longer than most uh, typical cryptocurrency traders are holding their coins. So um, interesting stuff. All right. Uh, this has been fun. Hope you enjoyed.
Uh, head over to zitidic.news and subscribe to our podcast, um, uh, as well as our YouTube channel, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, check out our articles and our interviews, or our interview with Bix Weir. And uh, don't forget to tune in this Thursday tomorrow on the 17th of September, 2020, 9.30 p.m. Eastern to check out episode 13 of the Zetitic Newscast with special guest John the Morgyle. This has been fun, y'all. <laughs>